Congratulations, you've just rented a Workmaster The Edge machine to refinish and polish your garage floor. My name is Frank and I'm with Workmaster and I'm going to show you how to get set up and get some great results. In order to protect ourselves from the environment that we're going to be working in, we want to make sure we're wearing a dust mask, we have eye protection, ear protection, and we have some good quality work gloves. Let's do a quick rundown of everything that is included in your rental kit. First, let's start off with the tooling. Included in your kit are a series of metal bond tools and a series of resin bond tools. These will come in various grits. We'll get into more detail on that as we move through the process. Next is our vacuum system. Our vacuum system runs on 110 volt and is a HEPA rated vacuum system. It includes the vacuum units, the wand, and the connecting hose. The star of the show is the 110 volt V-Edge machine. This machine is powered by 110 volts, which is your typical household current. To adjust the handle on the machine, simply pull this lever and set to a comfortable working position. To turn the machine on, press the start button and hold down the lever. To adjust the speed on the edge, simply turn this handle up or down. We recommend starting at the midway point and adjusting from there. I'm now going to tip the machine back and show you how to put on and take off the tooling. The edge uses our Workmaster plug and go tooling system, which requires no tools to remove or install the tools. Simply pick up the tool, install the supplied compression foam over the shear pins and install onto the plate. You are now ready to grind. To change out the tools, remove the plate, take off the compression foam, install your resin based tools in the same fashion that you installed your metal grit tools. and you're now ready to polish. In order to keep dust down to a minimum, the edge comes with a high quality dust skirt. You want to adjust the skirt though, so it was just proud of the tools. In order to do that, remove the Velcro from the front, remove the skirt, and adjust accordingly. Do this on both sides. And you will have a minimal of dust into your environment. We're just about getting ready to grind our floors. But before we begin, we want to quickly do a walk around our job site. And we want to look for anything that's sticking out of the floor, like a metal object, a bolt, a stud and we want to make sure that we grind those flush with the floor. Our rental kit also includes a Mohs hardness scratch test kit. What this does is it tests the abrasion strength of your concrete. Mohs concrete is a medium hardness. So that means our medium bond tools will cut nicely on this floor. But what we want to do is confirm that. So we start with our Mohs test kit here. We start with a nine pick. Nine is a very, very hard pick. So that means that if this floor does not scratch with a nine, it is very, very hard and may be difficult to cut open. So how we use it is that we take our pit and we just simply perform a series of scratches. As I can see here, this tool is making an audible sound, so it's scratching the floor, and it's also visually making a scratch on the floor. So we know the floor is not a nine. So pick over to the eight, and we start scratching. Again, we are getting the same results. We then move down to the seven pick. And start scratching. As you can see, this pick is not scratching the floor quite as much as the eight and nine. 
So we turn it over to the six. Very, very similar results. This floor is scratching at about a six in hardness. So our white medium bond tools are the right choice. We are now ready to start grinding our floor. We are starting with our 30 grit tools. To energize the machine, simply plug it in to your 110 volt cord and the machine will automatically power on. We've got our 110 volt vacuum. We want to hook that up to our dust port here. Make sure that is good and tight. And we have adjusted the handle to a nice comfortable operating position. In the next scenes, I'm going to be wearing my safety gear and I'm going to do a demonstration on how to run the machine. But basically, what you want to do is don't start right at your corner or at your edge, work into the edge. Um, you'll want to run the machine in a straight-ish forward manner and then S over it back. And I'll show you how to do that while I'm all suited up and grinding. We're making some really good progress on our grinding, as you can see, but I am noticing the machine is le leaving a little bit of dust on the floor. That is usually indicative that this vacuum needs a little bit of maintenance. Follow the supplied instructions on purging and changing your vacuum bag, but if you start seeing that, now is a good time to maintain your vacuum. We have now completed the 30-40 grit grinding stage, and as you can see, we've got our floor nice, flat, and smooth. You can also see that we've pulled off about 100 pounds of dust off this two-car garage. So initially, all concrete floors look flat and smooth, but to really get them truly flat and smooth, it does require some grinding, and that's why we recommend starting with a 30-40 grit. This will give you a nice, flat, smooth floor and a great profile to build upon. We now have put the 70 grit tools and we're ready for our next stage. I've just completed grinding the floor at 70 grit metals and I've noticed here that these cracks are becoming more apparent. This is an optional stage but if you want to fix them or cover them up a little bit um, there's definitely a process in doing that. So what you can do is uh, go to your local concrete supply store and grab a good quality floor patch repair material. Um, and then what you want to do is mix it almost to the consistency of drywall mud and just place it in the crack. Before you place it in the crack though, make sure you thoroughly clean it out. So it's a pretty simple process. And you just patch it out. 
Sometimes a second application is required as this patch can shrink a little bit. Um, putting a second application gets it nice and flush to the floor. Once you're done uh, all the patchwork, give it a good overnight to dry and come back the following day and hit it with those 70 grit metal tools that you still have on that machine to clean it all up. The 30, 70 patchwork have now been completed. We have a very nice looking floor or the makings of one. The next step is to go into our transition tools. Our 100 grit transition tools will remove any fine scratches left behind by the 70s. Changing the tools is quite easy. Just take the plate off, remove the compression foam, attach onto the foam Velcro plate with your tools on in this configuration here and just reinstall. We are now ready for the transition stage. After the transition stage, we're going to begin to densify the floor. That's a hardening process, and we'll talk about that more later. Densifying is a very important part of this process. We've just removed the top layer of concrete with our diamond tooling, and we've left the floor relatively soft and very water soluble. So that, that means that if you do not harden the floor, it is gonna to continue to dust up on you. We're using Workmaster Ultra Densifil to do this hardening, but if you don't have this product available, you can use any high quality lithium silicate densifier. Application is easy. Simply spray down and working with your microfiber applicator. It's best to have a helper for this process. You wanna spray it down and work it until, it, until rejection. You don't wanna pool the product, but you, you wanna make sure that you have enough down so that the floor stays wet for at least 20 to 30 minutes. We have now taken the floor up to our desired sheen. In our case, it was the 800 grit resins. And as you can see, we've got a nice shine. Our final step is to protect the floor. And for that, we're using our UltraGuard sealer. If you don't have UltraGuard, you can use a high, any high quality guard and that will give you good results as well. The sealing process is very similar to the densification process. You spray it down with your uh, pump up sprayer and put it down with your microfiber applicator. You'll want to put down two coats of our Ultra Guard sealer. Two coats will give you maximum stain protection as well. Ensure not to over apply the product. Two light coats is all that's needed.
You have now completed your floor and it is ready for foot traffic. Avoid water for at least 24 to 48 hours and you should be good with a nice polished concrete floors. Congratulations, you are finished. You can now enjoy your polished concrete floors. Thank you for watching and for more information, please visit workmaster.com.